then uh, I got a book coming out in January, which we've been working on for a couple of years. What are you going to highlight in on the book? I mean, is it going to be, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, the recent things that have been going on with Texas Tech, or what exactly are you going to focus on there? No, not really. We've been at this for two years. Bruce Feldman, I'm working with Bruce Feldman on Bruce Feldman's writing it. Uh, uh, a, a fine writer, uh, you know, writes stuff for ESPN among and ESPN magazine, things like that. Uh, and, and really does a good job. Uh, uh, and, and we've been at, as I say, we've been at it for two years. It's more my path into coaching. I mean, there'll there'll be a little bit of talk on uh, on recent events, but you know, I mean, the biggest thing is, is uh, those folks didn't want to honor the contract they agreed to the year before, and and uh, and what happened happens. You know, I mean, you got uh, well, one administrator in particular was jealous of the attention I got, and. Uh, Placement at Texas Tech and Tommy Tuberville. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really think anything. I know it's my best uh, group coming back. Uh, the group coming back is the best I have. We won 29 games in three years, and I thought this group was uh, uh, was the best one. So you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But you know, he really doesn't have anything to do with it either. And, and uh, you know, these great people there at Tech, great fans. I thought they were the best. Uh, fans in the country when I was there, and, and then, uh, uh, you know, you got about uh, uh, three shady individuals at the top as a result of all this, and, you know, and that's because uh, they were bitter over the contract negotiations and and didn't want to honor their work that they gave earlier on, and, and even, you know, even so far as I'd have been paid for uh, uh, last year. You know, for, forget the rest of my contract. I haven't even been paid for last year. No. Yeah. Wow. It's like, it's like Casey Stengel says, you can look it up. <laughs> wow, Mike. That is, that is mind-boggling. Mike, you know, when you look at the offenses and the spread offenses of today, um, do you, it's got to give you great joy to see, well, everyone had all these hybrid blue chip, you know, and all that. You just got this kid here, that kid here, this kid here, and plugged him in. You know, your system did turn out the, quote, prototype NFL quarterback. They sure as hell know how to let up, light up the scoreboard for you out there in Lubbock. Well, I, I thought we had, I thought we had good guys at quarterback. You know, I think uh, uh, you know the biggest thing as a coach, you try to make them maximize their abilities, play the very best they can, which I always felt like yeah, those guys did. And then you know, a couple of those guys, I think uh, you know the NFL is just wrong about. But with that said, within the NFL, there's different people looking for different things, and some guys value different things than others. And then. Uh, you know, and there's a right place at the right time quality to the thing. Um, but, uh, you know, Graham Harrell's with Green Bay, so we're looking forward to uh, uh, what goes on from there. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited about those guys. You know, Eckler and Wes Walker's been tearing it up for a couple of years. And I think what, what, what was it, Mike, about Walker? That was so. The kid was a gym rat. He was a quarterback, and he kicked off and and, and uh, punted and all that in, in high school. What was so special about him when you got him that, that you were so sure this guy was going to make it? Well, I think, I think there's two things that, that really stand out. You know, because you know he's got two qualities you don't like as a coach, and that that he's small and slow, and he's both of those things. Uh, but the thing is, is, is he's, the two things that uh, he's as good at as anybody I ever coached. One is he's the most confident individual I've ever dealt with. And then the other is, uh, you know, yeah, and I, uh, when I first started coaching, I always thought focus was something where you just pay attention harder, you know. Uh, you know, if you don't... Uh, uh, want to memorize your math table, so to speak. You know, Dad raises hell and keeps you up until you do, and then thereby you you you, you focus. But I think it's all in addition. It's a talent, and I think uh, Wes has the ability to focus for a longer period of time than normal people do. Like uh, 
really made super plays as much as he was able to do the same thing for the full 60 minutes where as uh, other people got tired and worn out, they'd lose their focus. And uh, so I think it's a real ability. The other thing is, and, and this is, this is uh, well, it's about the most sacrilegious thing a football coach can say, but I think that uh, in some circles, but I think uh, soccer made Wes Welker uh, 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 in some ways and, and helped him a great deal. Uh, Wes was all state soccer or something like that. And a really good soccer player, uh, but if you think about it, he had coordination on both sides of his body. He could come out of his cuts quickly on both sides of his body as far as right and left. He had great lateral movement, and if you think about just from the standpoint of developing vision, uh, if you're sitting there with the ball by your foot, looking out of the corner of your eye, figuring out where your buddy is to pass it to, uh, that vision's a lot easier if you're actually carrying the ball up above your waist, you know. And he really has good vision. And I, I think those skills he learned in uh, soccer really translated well for him in football. The voice you're hearing, that of Mike Leach, the genius behind the Texas Tech Red Raider passing game, calling us uh, unexpectedly. Coach, do you watch the Texans at all? And if so, your thoughts on the man who I think is the greatest receiver on planet Earth, Pluto, Neptune, or wherever, Andre Johnson. Hey, hey do you, uh, now, 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 John's getting these tickets, right? Because who knows, he might even take, uh, take me with him. Mike, let me tell you, we will. I will make certain. Whatever game you want to go to, you and John Gray are there. If I got to pay for him myself, you got that? That sounds good. I think he's a great player. I think he's an incredible player. And and you know the thing on the Texans, they. Uh, I think they keep getting better. Like, you know, I, I I don't I don't watch uh, the NFL. I don't watch it more this year. Um, because I'm not quite as preoccupied on Sundays. Uh, but the thing is, in, in, in college, uh, you know, you're sitting there watching all the films of your opponent and sorting out uh, what went right and what, what went wrong uh, on the game the day before. So, you know, it, it, you don't see as much of the NFL as you'd like. And then at the end of the season, I'm all up. Uh, information to Brian, uh, Brian Graham, and uh, I want to get you and John Gray uh, to a Texan football game. Well, that sounds excellent. And Mike, uh, don't be a stranger. Give us a call any time. It's been quite a, yeah. uh, quite a thrill for us. Uh, all of a sudden, we got the contest going, and someone says, Mike Leach, and um, <laughs> we did our due diligence, and you passed the test accordingly, <laughs> but... I will go to my grave believing one thing, Mike, and I know you can't talk about it, but the NFL needs to have you and your fertile mind to coach in this league because uh, you uh, would run circles around some of these defenses. Well, that'd be great fun, and, and, and we'd have a blast. Uh, uh, you got my number. Give me a call. I'm, uh, I'm heading to Key West in the next couple of days where I live now. If we can 